ever wondered how your favorite products you order from your mobile app gets delivered to your doorstep in a day or two? How do brands manage to ship these products across the country or even beyond borders in just a day or two? Well, it all comes down to a strong, tech-driven, efficient supply chain. India's logistics industry is the backbone of our economy, moving goods beyond cities, beyond states, beyond borders. As we aim for $5.5 trillion GDP by 2027, logistics is playing a massive role in making it happen. It contributes 13 to 14 percent to our GDP and employs over 22 million people and is evolving faster than ever thanks to technology, automation and smart warehousing. In this episode of Cargo Tales, let's talk about why warehousing is such a game changer. Think about it. When you order something online, it doesn't just appear at your doorstep magically. Behind the scenes, there's a whole network of warehouses, logistics hubs, and last mile delivery teams making it happen. Today, brands aren't just storing products. They are using warehouses to sort, pack, and ship orders at lightning speed. The faster they do it, the quicker you get your deliveries. With the rise of same day and next day shipping, companies are setting up regional and city-based warehouses to reduce delivery time and keep up with consumer demand. To understand the role and function of a warehouse and fulfillment center, we have reached Bhivandi, Maharashtra, near Bombay at Imiza Fulfillment and Warehouse. Few years back, warehouses were just a place where brands used to store their final products with their branding and packaging. But fast forward to 2025, warehouses are no longer just storehouses. They are becoming more of a fulfillment center where brands just send their products and fulfillment centers like Imiza add value to the products before they reach customers like you and me. These fulfillment centers, driven by technology and powered by automation, robotics and data science, often does everything from logo embossing, butter paper wrapping, final brand packaging to managing returns. To better understand the function of a warehouse, let's hear it from Ajay Rao, founder and CEO of Imiza. So Ajay, thank you for joining us. Pleasure here today. to be here. Yes. And uh, if you could tell us the function of a warehouse, how it functions and uh, the, its contribution to the logistics sector right. and why you started in this. Sure. So warehouses mean different things to different brands. So we are largely in the consumer space. So in the consumer space is not typically called a warehouse, it's called a fulfillment center. So the, the heart of a fulfillment center is about receiving product, being able to do certain value add on the product and then make it live into inventory. Post that, that inventory then goes live onto multiple channels that the brand is selling on, be it online, offline, quick commerce, e-commerce, all of that. Post that, uh, once the inventory is live, orders get uh, received across from multiple channels and those orders then get picked, packed and fulfilled. So the core objective of a warehouse is to fulfill inventory and to fulfill orders in the shortest possible time. So therefore, one important aspect is the strategic placement of the warehouse. What are the consumption points for that particular brand? how closely located is that warehouse to that particular consumption point and therefore from there how efficiently and effectively is the warehouse able to cater to the demands of the various uh, channels that the brand is selling on. So that is the primary uh, function. Of course the second major function is returns considering today and on today's online world especially with fashion returns is a predominantly large problem. So therefore receiving those returns, processing them refurbishing them and then getting them those products back into live inventory so that they can be sold again is a second primary function of the warehouse. So these are the two main functions. And the reason why I started Emiza to specifically cater to the nuances of consumer brands and to help them effectively manage their business both online and offline. So Ajay, if you could give us a tour of the warehouse and tell us how a warehouse functions. Sure, we happy to. Let's go. So what is the uh, average volume or the value of the products you handle in all overall? So, so typically, uh, we, since we handle consumer products right from FMCG to fashion, mm -hmm. the average uh, ASP for FMCG would be about maybe 300 rupees and the average ASP for fashion would be about maybe 800-900 rupees. 
this. Okay. So, so the products aren't very uh, high in value, mm -hmm. but they are very very high in volume and throughput. Okay. And uh, what is the approximate or say uh, the overall volume of product that you handle in Emisa across all warehouses? Across all warehouses. Uh, so per day, in terms of uh, B to C, we mm -hmm. would be handling close to about one and a half lakh shipments, which would be about four and a half million shipments a month. And in terms of B to B, we would be processing between 1.2 to 1.4 crore units a month. Is what we would be processing there. So let's start with the tour. So if you go just behind you and take a look, that is the dispatch area where all the couriers come in for pickup. Uh, so all there is this entire area is caged so that the couriers don't have access to the main warehouse. Okay. So all product and handover is done on that side. Coming to the left here, this is your uh, inbound area. So you can see we have four inbound docks over here. So all product coming to the warehouse is received here. Okay. And once it's received, it's uh, offloaded. Uh, the boxes are counted. The handover is done from the transporter. And then it's taken into that central area for staging. Okay. From there, it goes for further process. So would you like to see one particular brand? What we do in terms of yeah, value add? Yeah. Come. So let's look at Inc. 5, which okay. is a shoe brand. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide a very, very customized service uh, to them. So their products come to us directly from the factory and they come to us in a raw form, which okay. means that it's not in the, the package box that you would buy it in the store. So if you come here and you see, the shoes come to us like this. All right. They come completely open and naked and we do the entire process of QC packing and I'll show you how we do that. Come. So as you can see here, every product received is completely QC. Once they, they check for uh, they check for multiple things, they check for whether the right and left pair is there, they check for color, they check for the logo. There are about 10 to 15 checkpoints which happen. Post that, the shoes are packed in the, in the poly bags. Then they are put into the box, they're wrapped in butter paper. We do the MRP labeling, stickering, all of that entire value added activity is done here and we prepare the finished good unit over here. Once the unit is ready, we then take it into the uh, shelving area for put away. So there could be a lot of defective products also. Yeah, yeah. So whatever products get rejected at QC, then go back to the back to the vendor. Okay. So we send that back. So here you can see this is the entire packing system here. So this entire plate that you're that we're standing on is about fifty thousand square feet. This entire storage area, okay. and this is fifty thousand square feet into four levels. So that's two lakh square feet of. Uh, storage space. So you can see all the products are, sh are stored on the shelves. They are put away using handheld devices. Every location is barcoded and the product barcode is married with the location barcode so that we are able to identify in the software and system what product is exactly kept in what, what particular location. So is there any automation involved in this entire process? So automation is in the form of uh, software. Uh, there is no uh, robots here. We have conveyor systems available here to move product. Mm. But primary automation is in the term of handheld devices where the entire operation is largely paperless. So okay. all instructions are received mm. and conveyed via via devices. So as you can see, uh, the embossing for a lot of the pairs are also done here. So it's not just warehousing, it's beyond warehousing. The whole idea is to provide a very customized solution for every customer to every client so that they are able to sort of extract the maximum in the value chain and deliver from one product. Otherwise, they'll have to send this to multiple places to get the work done. So the whole idea is we bring all of the solutions in, under one roof so that the entire supply chain cost is reduced for the customer, time to market is uh, faster and uh, it's all in one controlled uh, environment for the customer to, uh, to check on. It's not just pick and pack. I mean, colloquially, we'll just think warehousing is just about receiving and taking out, but especially in today's uh, complex consumer space in India, there's a lot of value addition. The brands want to provide that personalized experience. Right. And personalization can only come with some level of customization, which is what we cater. So with the packaging, there's a lot of paper and single-use plastic used. So while keeping sustainability in mind, right. how do you approach this? What we do is two things. One is 
a lot of the we get a lot of return packaging material that comes back to the warehouses so we convert a lot of the return packaging material into dunnage so the, the orders that get shipped out you need to stuff it to protect the items so we convert a lot of the return packaging material into dunnage we have machines that can do that conversion so that gets stuffed in so we don't use plastic as much as possible when we ship the products out of the warehouse the second is we are now sort of moving towards uh, in fact this is the first warehouse where we now move towards uh, solar panels so the whole idea is about uh, each warehouse this warehouse is about 1 lakh square feet so we have 1 lakh square feet of real estate on the roof where we can uh, put solar panels and use that so that is and i think there's more than enough electricity that we can generate over there to run the entire operation so that's something that we are doing at emisa from a sustainability point of view if you could tell us about the process involved in detecting whether a product is a counterfeit or a fake product or yeah so typically whenever a product is received at the at the warehouse the return is received the first thing we do is we scan the shipping label which which comes in that shipping label then brings up the original order information uh, so we know who the customer was where was it shipped from what are the products that are in it then when you open the packet all of this is done under camera because we have to keep that entire uh, chain of custody moment we open it we remove the first product and we scan it when we scan it the image comes on the screen showing us what the product is so then we can immediately match visually whether it's the same product we then do a qc to see if there's any visible damage any stains any coffee marks any of those kind of things uh, we look at whether the tags have been removed or tampered with so we do all of those checks and then we mark the product either as good bad or repairable or fake fake means it's the we've sent product a and you've got back y uh good means it's 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 in good condition it can be uh, uh done second is uh, repairable or refurbishment means maybe the item is crumpled we need to iron it so it goes into the refurbishment bucket and uh, damaged is it then the brand has to come and take a call on how they want to salvage it so these are the four ways and then after that the inventory is segregated and put away so the good inventory goes back into the good location the what has to be refurbished goes to the refurbishment area where we do the ironing and i'll show you that later where we do the entire ironing refurbishment and then from there uh, the bad inventory goes into a separate area where the brand comes once a month to check on it and take whatever action that is the fake of course also goes there as well yeah so now that we've talked about returns the whole process of uh, salvaging the return is called refurbishment so why don't we go to the refurbishment area and have a look so a lot of product gets damaged during this logistical process Correct. so what happens to those products so typically damages would be about maybe about 3 3% on average is what you would see 2 to 3% at best so again categories like fashion you don't see that much of damage right it's mainly fmcg so typically if a product is damaged if it reaches the end consumer uh with the opener they will obviously find it damaged so they will immediately then either in, uh, initiate a return if it's a fmcg product if it's damaged most cases it doesn't make sense bringing it back so the brand will just do a replacement they will say keep the damaged product and we'll send you a new new product so that's what happens in the fmcg category and now we are seeing a lot of this 10 minute deliveries Correct. with the emergence of quick commerce Correct. and uh, so what do you think is the role of a warehouse in quick commerce So quick to me quick commerce is another channel right for a brand it's now opened up a new avenue earlier it was just e-commerce amazon flipkart website offline quick commerce is a brand new channel so from a warehouse point of view it is just fulfilling a bulk order to that channel so whenever we receive orders from let's say a brand on behalf of a zepto or a blinkit or a swiggy then we pick pack and each of these uh quick commerce pl- ch- platforms have very very stringent requirements in terms of how the product has to be packaged the labeling and all of that kind of product so then so those sops need to be well defined within the warehouse the teams need to execute as per those sops we then pack and then we put, we also take the appointment deliver the product to the to the quick commerce take the pod and then complete the circle over there this is one leg when it comes to quick commerce which is marketplace initiated second is now obviously with quick commerce coming in and the need for speed brands are also realizing that they need to step up the game also when it comes to their own website because eventually what will happen is that their own business or their own traffic will get cannibalized by quick commerce so brands are now actively looking at how do we create uh, faster deliveries shorter deliveries so that they are able to retain and grow their own customer base online so they want to use quick commerce as the base to acquire the customer 
and then try to see how much of that traffic can be transferred to their website to retain. So for that, dark stores in city, same day delivery, these are some of the models that we are experimenting with to help the brands deliver faster. So speed is now here to stay, you can't uh, debate on that. The question is around sustainability. So let's come to the last portion yeah. where we see what's next for Himiza because we know uh, so far you have raised around 200 crore in funding and we raised about uh, yeah, about 170, yeah, 170. And uh, recently uh, 100 crore in a series C funding. Correct. Uh, so what's your plan? How are you going to utilize that and leverage it? Yeah. So firstly, anyway, in this latest funding round, we've uh, been able to do a significant amount of secondary also. So the good thing is we've been able to give exits uh, partial exits to some of our early investors and believers. So that was very uh, gratifying for us. Uh, but on the primary side, look, we are extremely bullish about the whole India story. We really believe that the whole commerce play is really going to unfold even more. Uh, it's, the demand is going to go into tier 2, tier 3 uh, channels. All these new channels, emerging channels are coming out. So I think we are basically riding that wave. Uh, there's always going to be ups and downs, softening of demand and you know, heavy demand, that's going to be part of the business. But we are sort of building the infrastructure. We believe that uh, India needs quality third-party logistics companies to cater to these uh, requirements. And uh, so we are out we're sort of building building infrastructure, building more warehouses with this, going to more cities, uh, investing into building faster delivery uh, sort of uh, services. You know? So the whole idea is build for speed, build infra, and enable brands. So that is where it is. And of course, a, a good chunk of it will also go to technology because finally speed and all of this is going to be tied together by technology, right? Inventory visibility, uh, algorithms that can calculate, help optimize cost, optimize inventory. So there'll be a good amount of spend going there. And of course, as we scale, we're going to need uh, more capable people within the team. So definitely we're going to be hiring more senior leadership, uh, strengthening the middle layers within the company, so on and so forth. Thank you, Ajay. Yeah, Thank pleasure. you for your yeah, time. Thank you. Thank you so Thank you. much. And that's a wrap from us at Imiza's warehouse in Bhivanji. Clearly, as logistics is at the heart of India's fast-moving economy, warehouses are at the heart of the entire supply chain. From the moment you tap on the buy now option on your favorite e-commerce platform till the product gets delivered to your doorstep. So next time you order something online, remember to be grateful to the people involved in the entire logistics cycle. And before hitting the return button, be cautious and critical as it not just adds a cost to the brand but also adds a carbon footprint to the e-commerce sector. And if you find this video insightful, please like, share and comment below. For more such interesting stories around logistics and supply chain, subscribe to our channel Stat Media and keep watching Cargo Tales.